Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Sliding into frame here. Uh, you are tuned in to A Link to the Past Randomizer, the main tournament, and Ambrosia Seed, Nectar of the Gods. I am Eudaimonistic today, joined by the one and only Spark JD. How are you doing this afternoon? Even I'm doing <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for asking, Uday. Um, I'm really excited about this race. Uh, Andy is 2-0 and Aridin is 1-0 right now, so it's going to be a good one. Exactly. As you mentioned, Group O getting off to a uh, fast start here. Ambrosia being the seed format today, we find out that the boots are in Thieves Town, uh, one of the mode specific hints that you can get. I am um, happy that you caught that. I did not see that text. Well, stolen shoes aside in the dark world, it'll be a probably at least a little while before we get there. Uh, another hallmark of this mode, we're going to do a standard opening uh, here with an assured sword. Uh, they, of course, can't use that sword until they've gotten to the uncle. Uh, but if they did have the boots somehow, they would be able to dash. That's a map check. I'm not sure how much I caught, but I want to say there was a crystal at Eastern. Um... Yeah, it was too fast for me. But, you know, getting the bottle early like this, they'll be able to check the sick kid once they get to Kakariko. Yeah, I'd be very surprised to see either of these two drop this B before getting there. Uh, they can, of course, get some extra rupees from the bottle merchant, who will absolutely buy that B. I don't know, have you ever tried using the B on the ball and chain card? <laughs> Not a bad idea. And in fact, if we didn't have that assured sword, I'd probably actually consider that for sure. The uh, two pot strat is definitely a good fallback, uh, but if you're trying to conserve your time, not a bad idea either. Well, a bit of a small head start here for Andy going into the basement. Um, Aridin trying to stay on top of the heap here in Group O. Uh, but this is definitely something that somebody who has run a few speed runs benefits from, as we see a somewhat more optimal blue guard here on Andy. Yeah, it's always nice to see, you know, like these top runners doing uh, a standard start. You get to see some of the like pumping happening and just the optimal strats for escape. Yeah, so we saw um, Andy go a little further north in the room leading to this one. Uh, Aridin had to fight that guard on the way through. Of course, there is a side benefit to doing that. Uh, you don't know what the drops are, so killing more guards, maybe even a tactical decision by Aridin here. Yeah, uh, the one thing to consider is, you know, getting those bombs for the back of escape once they get there. Yeah, there's no absolute guarantee that you'll get any along your path. Uh, and you could have to go back through the front to get through the uh, back of escape if a glove's locked back there. Uh, but our runners don't seem to be too perturbed. Getting an 8 slash here out of Andy. It's very nicely done with the key dropping right there next to the gate. I'm looking like Aridin going for the same thing, having to back him into the corner a little bit for safety, but will emerge mostly unscathed. I'm uh, almost surprised we didn't see any unsheathed fights at that. Uh, no pot strats thrown around. Uh, both of our runners feel good about their slashes today. Yeah, I think especially getting that extra heart, you know, it makes it a little safer. To address a question um, in chat regarding whether or not guards have an empty prize pack, uh, no, they, they just have a 50-50 chance of dropping anything in any given situation. And we've rolled nothing but nothing. <laughs> Unless I'm mistaken and someone in chat will immediately correct me. So we are still on the hunt for bombs. There are a few different opportunities on the way back. Uh, seeing some allegations of a ruby prize pack, which is helpful, uh, would make sense based on the total ruby counts, actually. Andy has about a 10-second lead here, maybe 15. 
I always forget that Ambrosia is a standard start. It kind of makes me miss uh, the standard start tournaments from last year. Yeah, definitely a hallmark. Uh, I it makes me miss the NMG tournament, honestly. Oh, I didn't know you were into NMG. Not actively, but it oh. is fun to watch. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think it is rupees. I think that uh, rope dropped another rupee there for Airden. Yeah, so while we do have a good B to potentially sell uh, to get us a bottle vendor item, we do still want more rupees, plenty more to be spent. A good 700 if you want to do everything in the game. Um, plus that, actually. There's more than 700 total, but you definitely need hundreds. Oh. And uh, every rupee drop helps. There it is. There's a bomb. Well, that's really clutch for Andy. That was the last opportunity. We'll see if Aridin manages to get one. Oh, no. Looks like he's Ooh. skipping it. And is actually rewarded for it, as Andy uh, really didn't come up with anything besides more bombs. Yeah, if uh, Airden manages to stay completely out of the back of escape, I mean, that's that's a skip. Yeah, definitely fair play to assume that Airden at some point likely goes back there. Uh, hopefully with boots, maybe save some time over Andy, who is uh, just now entering Sanctuary. Still sub six minutes, which is, you know, it's nice. Incredible. I'm not jealous, I'm just slower than that, <laughs> Vanilla. Oh. So Andy did a save and quit and started at Link's house here. Uh, having those three bombs. All right, so I mean, I can give my, I can wrap my head around this a little bit. Uh, you have a weapon from Mini Moldorm Cave. You have the bombs. He appears to be, well, he's definitely at least gonna check the dam. And Aridin getting the bombs from the tree pole there too. So he's got uh, four bombs now. And we'll even get a Lumberjack Scout, uh, which is just more bombs, so Aridin's not worried about the boots on that level. So a bit of an interesting scenario going on here for Andy. Uh, South Shore immediately getting that hammer, actually. <laughs> wow. wow. While that hammer is pretty nice, uh, it doesn't immediately give as much. Uh, we will, of course, need to do more to find out more. And Rupee Crab uh, turning out to be mostly the same as normal. Uh, just upgraded a bit. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the South Shore play before CAC usually pays off most if you find something like the flute, you know, before there, before getting there to CAC. Especially knowing that the boots aren't going to be here. Yeah, I gotta say, without any other major indicators that he should be heading this way, I'm pretty surprised that Andy's play to go to South Shore. Aridin's showing us what you would mostly expect from, I'd say, the majority of runners of this game. Oh, wow, there's the flute. So Andy's going to be able to activate that flute the first time in Kakariko. Now, that could not go much better than that. Um, that will also save him time going to the desert. Um, and time going to Ice Rock Cave. Uh, we get another bottle and a Quake Medallion here in Blind's Hut. Uh, Aridin working his way through. Uh, we'll have a bit of a hefty head start on Andy as far as the village goes. But I think I'd trade that for a flute. Yeah, for sure. Um, this does mean it looks like Andy is skipping checking Lumberjack. Um, which... You know, we've seen what it is. It shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, and it seems fairly common that a lot of runners out there won't check it until they have the boots to make it even worthwhile to, you know, get. Uh, there's not a lot of better times, though. You'd have to be basically with a mirror and heading uh, north Dark World. That's a Master Sword. Right. <laughs> so, what do you think? Uh, still still an Agassiz for Dark World access? <laughs> I think Aridin would be thinking about that if he wasn't just emerging from the cash money cave. Uh, we are set. Yeah. Doesn't even worry about selling that uh, B. Well, no, he does. 
Um, we'll get the 100 rupees in reward. And I think that's all the money he's going to need for the whole seed. Yeah, so a little bit of time expenditure for Andy on uh, that rupee crab. A good hedging your bets kind of thing to do. Um, you know, and for all we know, we may end up needing potions later. Uh, so there's still some potential for money to be important, but we're not going to be short of it anytime soon. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> there's even more cash. Haven't even left Kakariko and you already got more than a thousand rupees. And a hook shot. Ooh. Well, Aridan's looking to pull it together as we're seeing quite a bit of what looks to be tax evasion in the in the village. <laughs> Basically. I mean, he was hiding that money under his mattress. Yeah, right? That's it, kid, man. Troublemaker. A little bit of a fun hookshot action going on here from Aridan, trying to save a little bit of time here and there, and that is the moon. Oh, man. I would be tempted to just brush Aga here. <laughs> That's a good point. I mean... The dark rooms are not fun, but you can do them. And, you know, even though there's a hammer, we don't have a glove to really do much else with it. Yeah, I think it's because the hammer and the hookshot gets you access to the North Dark World. Um, so you can get over to Thieves Town and grab those boots. That said, if Aga's not required, <laughs> you're probably losing some time there. Yeah, because in this situation, it kind of feels like it's necessary that we either find a lamp somewhere in the eastern area or one of these one-off checks. Um, of course, the alternative being that glove. Mind DM, to answer your question, I would if I were one of these runners th that could do it. <laughs> yeah, Dark Aga, that, that is quite the prospect. Of course, we do <laughs> have, with that flute, the mountain available to us with hookshot access to the east side, uh, hammer back across. Uh, so probably the more likely choice for our runners here. Yeah, almost certainly. <laughs> Count some screen transition saved by Aridin having the hookshot this first pass through. I'm um, getting a better look at the map. It looks like Green Pendant Desert Palace and Red Pendant Tower of Hera off of that Eastern Palace regular crystal. Well, Smirk, uh, you know, I don't know if you were this way, but I for one, always fall into the trap of going for those one-offs. Uh, we do still have the Gina's Cave and Ice Rod Cave, and even some sequence-broken uh, water checks. How likely are you to go up the mountain first before you do any of those? Um, especially with the Flute in hand, I am very likely to do that. Um, I will say, though, with Ambrosia, knowing that the boots are in Thieves Town, my, like, my goal there is to get the Dark World ASAP, so I might go for Density here instead and do the mountain in. I knew there was Maybe. a reason you had a better qualifier score than me. <laughs> what? I take gambles, I do. And I gotta say, the early gamble by Andy, uh, you know, felt like a scr head scratcher going into it, looked genius coming out of it. Time will tell whether or not that little boost of speed to uh, kind of piece the rest of this together will end up counting for enough. Um, Aridin, very likely, as soon as he gets that glove, to probably go back to the back of escape. Yeah. Well, and so if you think about it, the time that Andy saved by doing South Shore first is basically just the walk from Sink to Kakariko. Because um, now Aridin has to do that again um, to activate his flute, whereas Andy only had to do it once. So that's, what, a good maybe a minute of time? Yeah, and so... Andy's already on his way to Gina's Cave, so I mean, this is a pretty close, direct comparison right now we're looking at. Yeah. And so if you see the final time, if Andy wins by like 59 seconds, then you know that that play did it. <laughs> kind of wild to think about. A lot of race ahead of us still. Um, <laughs> yeah. But you know, I mean, you could be quoted on that later. It's 35 seconds. Thank you, Sugar132 in chat for pointing out the difference. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a really smart heads up way to read the situation as well. 
Um, Andy could have easily have walked all the way over to Ice Rod Cave and forfeited a lot of that time. Um, not going to fall prey to that. Aridin, however, is walking over to Ice Rod Cave uh, after fluting to eight. So we'll get to see this other one-off check that Andy did not do. It's really nice when the runners, you know, they opt to do that. I think it was an agreement beforehand so that the commentators and chat ha get to see what's in both of those. Yeah, truly a gentleman's <laughs> agreement for gentlemen. <laughs> well, I like this Saha check. It's full of love. But I wonder if he's dipping into Eastern here. Okay. If he is dipping, it's not even a toe at this point. Uh, water may be a little <laughs> too cold. <laughs> All righty. Well, we expected a mountain maybe a little bit sooner. We're only 15 minutes into this race. A lot of sphere one already complete. Uh, moving well into the next couple of spheres here with a dark room uh, here in the mountain. Uh, this will give us a save and quit point, as well as a lot of mountain access. So I do genuinely think they're going to find the lamp up here in the mountain, um, if it's not an Eastern Palace. And I think that's going to be the Aga access. I, I don't know if I'm just hoping for Aga. <laughs> I don't know why. You know, I mean, even if you're not in the audience who, you know, hoping for Aghanim, it's also an interesting tension in this seed. I mean, both of them have to be thinking, I've had everything I've needed to technically do it. You know, what's going to be the thing that breaks me free from it? And they can still end up getting locked behind Aghanim at this point. Yep. And the question here is, if there is no glove up here, um, does Aridin go through the front of escape to get to the back? I can't remember. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, he should be able to, right? Go back to the back. That yes, way? you are still given a uh, light cone for specifically the sewers um, in this particular format, any standard mode. Okay, yeah. So, you know, that could be something that Aridin chooses to do um, without those gloves. He could be like, oh no, did I miss the gloves in the back of Escape? Do I go check that or do I just gamble the aggo? And the prospect of this for Aridin is to basically whittle his health down enough that the Death Warp back from Dark Cross is worth it. Or not Dark Cross, but the uh, Back of Escape. And even then, healthy time loss uh, involved there. So I gotta think, if you're playing in Aridin's shoes, you try to avoid that at all expenses. We are still a little bit away from that. There's a few opportunities for this seed to bail us out. Uh, we are here in the Paradox Cave. Up or down, sideways, leftways, slantways. I don't know, Willy Wonka's factory <laughs> going on in here. That's a glove. Oh, there it is. There's the glove. So, no Aga today. Uh, but now, do you rush to Thieves Town for those boots? I mean, after finishing, you know, I guess, Spiral Cave here, do you dip into, into Hera? Like, what's the play here? So while I know both runners are definitely able to uh, do the bootsless setup for Heropod, they must at this stage of uh, play. Uh, you know, it is an option. They can do it. It's on the table. They don't have to commit to doing everything in the dungeon. And I think that's why we see Andy coming across here now. Yeah, we know that Hera is a pendant, um, and it's a relatively fast dungeon. <clears throat> but... Uh... You know, if there's something in here, that's that's a big payout. Yeah, and I think <laughs> I'm seeing that from Andy from by your description. Uh, you know, there's a small key there. Could have taken it. Didn't bother. <laughs> yeah, he's like, nah, I don't even want the key. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem ideal to fight Moldorm, but that is an item potentially. And uh, it doesn't take that long to fight him if you're practiced. All right, Andy showing us a uh, Harapot there. And heading up to Hera. Looks like Aridin's skipping on the Hera play, going straight to Spiral Cave. Um, I think that would be a little bit more what I would opt to do. Um, I mean, I'm a Boots fan, so I would be rushing for those Boots. I might even skip Spiral Cave. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing, though, is this is, uh, I guess you could probably call it a more conservative play to, you know, make sure you didn't leave this Spiral Cave even though there's clearly a time advantage involved in skipping this for later. 
Yeah, well, and the same thing with uh, Andy's play of doing Hera. Um, unfortunately, Hera did not pay out for Andy, at least not yet, unless pet is required. Both items were, were junk. It was 100 rupees and 10 arrows there. Yeah, and all things considered, that's very fast completion of those items. Uh, so Andy's never coming back to the dungeon. Uh, never has to worry about it and completely write it off. Uh, Aaron yeah. is definitely dodging the duck. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, he was going to flute, uh, but then decided, now nah, let's go to Hype Cave. Um, this is interesting because, you know, you can't get to Thief's Town from this direction with the current items, unless he finds, like, mitts in here, or he'll have to, you know, save and quit and go the north path. And from my experience, I think this indicates that Aridin wants to just get through dig game and not have to worry about the follower issue. Yeah, that, that could very well be it. Well, you could say things went swimmingly. <laughs> yes, with those flippers in Hype Cave. And uh, technically giving us access... Uh... Oh, no, no, we already had the hammer. Okay, that was Red Crystal in Swamp Palace and Pod, if I saw that correctly. I did not catch the other pendant, though. I think it was we, Ice. We will place our trust in our wonderful, lovely tracker today, Jinxie Girl. We appreciate you. Thanks, Jinxie Girl. Okay, so Andy is taking the north path into the dark world. Oh, Stumpy with the mids. So it looks like Aridin will be able to get there from this direction after all. So if you're to liken, I guess, the uh, the Dark World Overworld experience to a laundry machine, uh, you know, the, the direction of the spin cycle that you go in when it comes to Mitt's access to the west side, um, this is the best case scenario for Aridin. Uh, Andy would have to go do a lot before he ends up with that uh, Titan Smiths. And that could end up burning him uh, in the end if he doesn't want to come back to the village to do the Peg Cave, or any other reason he doesn't want to double back on stuff. Um, of course, Andy is going to get those boots quicker, though. And fortunately, uh, Thieves Town is also a crystal, so, you know, being able to full through. Oh, wait, we saw Aerodin save and quit out of there. That's interesting. I'm shocked he didn't just go straight up into Thieves Town. But yeah, oh, that's what it is. Okay. Okay, so there's a little bit more of a. Uh... I mean, the thing to consider here also is the math of how long you have boots. And Andy will have them for longer now before Aridin, uh, thanks to doubling back here. Although this is the more complete play to make. Yeah, I think, you know, this is um, kind of like a safe 1v1 play from Aridin. You know, you know, it's something your opponent potentially did already um, if they got those bombs before leaving escape. So it's one of those things, like if there was something there, my opponent definitely has it. And if I'm to judge by the uh, slashing on screen, leaving Link's house, Aridin probably realizes that uh, keeping the dark world there might've been advantageous. Uh, but we'll get to see a Meyer area first out of Aridin. Anything important here would be a pretty good head start over Andy who will likely do the dark world loop. Um, I'm I'm wondering, did Aridin miss the the boots text? Maybe he didn't catch it. Yeah, I mean we don't have a mirror here to go into desert, so I mean this can be considered a pretty quick check overall. Um, but I mean. You don't really want to be going there without the mirror if you know where your boots are. Yeah, I mean, Aridin is making a lot of, like, really good checks, of course. Um, you know, checks I love to make as well uh, when I have the combination of items with the, the mitts and the flute and stuff. But it's just curious, you know, like, with Thief Town being a crystal and knowing that the boots are there, it just, it seems like, you know, the most sensible thing to do. So I think that must mean that either Aridin forgot 
what the boots hints was, or maybe didn't catch it when it was said. Well, I do like this choice, though, to uh, check water uh, locations, as Aridin did end up getting uh, earlier flippers, thanks to taking, taking the roundabout way, um, you know, kind of going against the grain as far as the logic of boots went. Uh, so Aridin will get to check Hobo here. We'll be able to check uh, Zora and knock all that out in one fell swoop. Uh, however, the gap of boots going to be hard to ignore. Andy's pretty good with them. Yeah, yeah. Aridin's definitely following, you know, the items he finds and the logic um, from them. So it's, you know, nice to see that for sure. Alrighty, well, boots in tow in tie formation between the two of them. Uh, Andy is dashing through this fight uh, blind here. Nice, fun script. Probably done this a bajillion times. A bajillion plus one will be pretty straightforward. <laughs> As dashing we... through this fight, huh? <laughs> I like it. Trying to stay on her toes here. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, as chat mentioned, you noticed he skipped both the um, big chest and the blind cell chest. So um, the f he had already found all four items by then. Um, primarily the ether medallion and the boots, I think, were the two big ones to note. Yeah, that sounds correct. Also, we're finding out that there is a cape on Zora's ledge, which is an interesting find. Um, we don't need it to go to Akinim or anything like that. Um, but it is useful in vulnerability item and potentially our spike cave access. As well as uh, bumper ledge. I don't know. If, I don't think Andy has checked that yet. So you could see an item there where those that cape might be required. And I think the question of going north dark world is going to be mostly resolved by when or if we find that mirror. Because uh, it yeah. might be quite a yeah. long time before we do. Right. Having that mirror for go before going up there is definitely a, a thing. Uh, something else to highlight about the mode that I don't even think we've talked about so far in this broadcast, or maybe we did right at the beginning. Um, but Ambrosia, you will have a guaranteed item on every boss. Uh, so that's part of the math of what Andy was doing there in Thieves Town. Um, you know, having already kind of excluded one potential location. Ah, yes, absolutely. I actually... I remembered that, but then I forgot it in the moment, so I'm glad you brought it up. So he had only found three items and then got the fourth item on the boss. I suppose some dungeons are more simplified than others uh, with that. I mean, Thieves Town definitely is more straightforward, as you're much more likely to have a self-locking key. I love uh, Eastern Palace and Ambrosia. I mean, I've only done it twice, but... Um, <laughs> Both times I was able to skip the right side, so because of that knowledge of the item on boss. Hey, anytime I don't have to rely on the same card, I'm happy. This is a pretty cool play over here by Aird and going up the mountain with those mitts and the hook shot, um, opening up the portal, getting the medallion information, which is ether for TR access, uh, which we now know is in Thieves Town. Yeah, to be frank, it's uh, th this all feels very head scratchy now. So we, we kind of flipped the script here. Andy at the beginning doing things that looked kind of like you scratch your head at it. That's the only words I've got for it. And now Aridin kind of following suit. Um, I'm not sure what I think here. Uh, I do think that Aridin perhaps missed the hint or didn't even look at it. Uh, because deliberately avoiding your boots as a 1v1 decision against Andy seems a little strange. Yeah, yeah. Um, it could it could have been a misread too. Maybe he saw Dark World um, instead of Thieves Town or something, and you know that could be like, oh, now I'm doing the Dark World checks uh, rather than dungeons. But he did find the lamp there in Hookshot Cave, so this gives him, you know, things that are fire locked, like Meyer. Um, yeah, 
Here's another interesting choice, uh, doing Spike Cave. If you're in the area, not a bad idea. I'm just surprised with uh, the equipment that that's what we're going for. So we're going to expend all of our magic and I don't even know. Yeah, that should be enough. I think if he decides to go to Thief's Town after this, I think he's fine. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so Aridin is reading the seed really well. Um, despite, you know, missing those boots, I think, like we discussed, missed that information. Um, he is really following the seed, uh, getting those progression items. Uh, I just hope he goes to Thief's Town soon. Yeah, because, I mean, while, you know, a small gap of time with with or without boots isn't going to count that severely, um, it adds up to minutes over the course of a full run. And that's a difficult margin to give up against somebody who has, you know, literally been at the top of the field since, you know, this tournament's inception. Yeah, for sure. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, like, speaking to the point that you're making here, Smirk, is that, you know, we're seeing Aridin go after a few things that are likely to bite most runners. Uh, Spike Cave is not an appealing location at any point when you don't have the mirror, when you don't Absolutely. have other reasons to go back up the mountain. Yeah, and like you said before, when since Andy already cleared Hera, um, you know, the only reasons to go back up there would be, you know, Ether Tablet and Spike Cave, and which is, you know, two kind of slower, out of the way checks. Um, so it might might be a while to find. Uh, for Andy to find that mirror. He's got so many dungeons he can clear at this point. Yeah, so I suppose that's one of the things to watch closely here is, uh, you know, Andy, of course, has so many choices and plenty of density to chase after and good reason to do so. Um, you have crystals you can finish. You know, you're only missing a handful of items, um, but most of them are, you know, critical, important items like that fire rod, the bow... Uh, we're st we still got a chunk of change we got to pick up. Absolutely. Um, fortunately, no medallion hunt, but this could still be an ice rod hunt since TR is on the table as a crystal. <clears throat> um, and it is something that, you know, potentially Andy could go into without the mirror, um, which, you know, makes Mimic Cave a danger. Couple more boots locations out of Andy here. Gonna get the King's Tomb we just saw, which is junk, and a also junk Bonk Rock Cave. We didn't even have that boomerang. <laughs> what? Red meringue is best meringue. <laughs> Blue meringue's my boy. Oh yeah? Can you refill magic with the blue meringue? No. <laughs> uh, thankfully, Aaron did, did go into Thieves Town and got his boots now. So only, uh, what, 10 minutes maybe? After Andy got boots, yeah, maybe not even that long. It's certainly a mitigated choice here now, like the the punishment for having boots. If if you went half an hour to an hour, that's pretty tough to climb back from. Look, I mean, both boomerangs, you know, <laughs> <laughs> can can do good things, and you know, you can get you can uh, you can't sink and quit off of either of them. So I guess they both aren't the coolest thing ever. Man, I was trying to cleverly change the subject right after getting the last word in, but you didn't forget, did you? <laughs> Hanging in there, you know, coming back, just like a boomerang. <laughs> nice. Okay, so Andy is going up the mountain here. Um, probably going to do, you know, open Turtle Rock uh, and do those Hookshot Cave checks and stuff. This might be his chance to go over to Spike Cave and get that mirror. Um, but we'll see. I kind of feel like you go into Turtle Rock. Uh, you're not going to have likelihood of being able to do much if it's Fire Rod locked, but you can right, have to yeah. out. Yeah, it'll be curious to see if Andy does go in to check that first item or not, and if it's a small key, how far does he go? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure we'll see the other you know caves here and then go in if he's going to. Um, but if he does, I kind of think that pushes him away from Spike Cave. Because he won't have a mirror to, to get out. All right, looking like, yeah. I guess we'll see for sure, like you said, after checking Super Bunny and Hookshot. All right, we're going to see if Aridin counted his items here.
Whoops. Hey, there we go. Couldn't even get there anyway. <laughs> yeah, kind of a really friendly dungeon in that respect. Yeah, for sure. You know, I didn't know that, Smirk, that Zelda's fashion is very chic. <laughs> I'm honestly more surprised there's one I haven't seen before. And that is Turtle Rock for Andy, as Aridin is collecting uh, Crystal Number 1 here, 35 minutes in. Uh, Andy will do the dive, and I'm wondering whether this means this mirror's gone. Yeah, this is this is dangerous. Big key. Okay, he can't progress. Gonna take the oh, saving and quitting. It looked like he was going to death warp at first, but did the yeah. saving quit? So that spike cave is still orphaned up there. Or he was it? ready to. Oh, that's no, that's true. That's one of those critical moments, you know, in a race where you have to make a gut, you know, gut call, gut decision. You got to know, you know, what the odds are. And Spike Cave Mirror isn't necessarily likely. It's not more or less possible, but certainly right. less likely. And, you know, it's also one of those things like the mirror could be, you know, harmful as well. Like if there's nothing behind this mirror, um, that's just extra checks that Airden's going to do with it um, and cost them some more time. I mean, that said, it's still 100% required for Swamp Palace, but... You know, if, if let's say mirror is Andy's go mode, you know, he'll get to skip on all the mirror checks. That's a solid point. Um, absolutely agree with you there. And so I imagine what we'll probably see is Aridin continuing to do these mirror checks, hoping that Andy did exactly what happened here. Um, and I imagine this means we chain this into Swamp. Yeah, that's, yeah, it looks like where this is going for Aridin. Full Swamp passes here. It's a red crystal. Swamp is a very loaded dungeon with six items, so, I mean, it's a very sensible play. Well, Swamp always, is one of the... Oh, go ahead. I'm just saying, it's always good to see players, you know, playing to their win condition, and Swamp would be potentially one of them. Um, I kind of cut, cut off your thought, though. I'm sorry. No, yeah, I was just going to say Swamp is one of those dungeons where it's like, yeah, it's, it's a super dense dungeon, um, you know, a lot of item requirements to get there. But at the same time, you know, it's a long dungeon um, and it's one of those that most runners like to just go mode. So because go moding it is much faster. So it's one of those things like, do you go into it early when you have the access or do you try to save it off so that you can go mode it later? Yeah, and Swamp, the place that we're likely to see Aerodin head to next after this uh, purple chest is certainly one of those go mode preferred dungeons. Um, and Aridin will end up spending a lot of time there, probably. I do wonder, though, if Aridin... I mean, I'm sure he'll put it off for at least a little while, but if Aridin will decide to go into desert, since that flute mirror combo does give him access to the green pendant desert. Yeah, I would say if there was a moment to do so, it was probably just then. Although I wouldn't be surprised to see that be a next move after Swamp here. Yeah, that's. I was thinking, you know, you definitely do Swamp first since it's a crystal, but like, if, let's say he doesn't find very much in there, like, does he choose that um, over like a Dolus Pod, for example? You know, and it's also a dungeon that does benefit quite a bit from Ambrosia. Desert, you can potentially skip, you know, a couple of rooms or even half the dungeon um, in terms of like actual dash traversal. Um, you know, so it's a quick check and knowing that it's a green pendant means it's a double item boss. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, Lamo, you could just like skip to Lamo and or find the big key, go straight to Lamo.
Oh man, compass in that first chest of swamp. For me, that means I do left side right away. And Andy is just flying through Mire here, um, doing glitches, uh, going through the rails. Yeah, door state extension to get through the uh, rail there, a common tactic that you'll see also in Palace of Darkness. Um, really fun way to kind of save yourself a little bit of time. Um, the routing improves for it. And Andy needs it as pushing these blocks and lighting them with lamp stinks. We in there, though. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm getting kind of nervous. Like, I'm not even racing this one, but I'm like, ah, oh, where's, like, what's going to happen? <laughs> Certainly understandable to have anticipation mounting. We are 40 minutes in and still not quite a very clear picture as to what gets us to go. Yeah, I mean, we're just missing so much. We got that bow, fire rod, ice rod. Um, actually, is that it? <laughs> I think that's actually it. So <laughs> maybe... <laughs> Maybe it is a little closer than I thought, but. I mean, bow and rod, bow and rods at minimum and whatever might potentially lead to them. Right, yeah. Okay, so it looks like Aridin is doing left side swamp before going to the back. Um, like I mentioned, it's something I would do as well after having already found the compass. And meanwhile, oh, go ahead. Oh, just noting it was a bomb diver down. Fun to see. Yeah, he did bomb diver down, even though he had the Canis Maria, so. We're already left side swamp time while Andy here taking on Vitreus with uh, Master Sword and it looks like Cave Strats after he runs low on health. Uh, very textbook fight as far as uh, the sword spins are going. That's a lot of damage done with the Master Sword. Yeah, you killed six of those small eyeballs real quick. And I didn't catch, but it didn't look like Left Swamp had anything on Aridin's side. Oh my gosh, he's using the hammer with three hearts! It's Steven's safety corner. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow, okay. So brave. I don't know that he made it look easy, but that's hard. That's hard to hit with the hammer. <laughs> Thank you, Incoherent in chat. Thank you. It terrifies me too. All right, Andy is done with Meyer. That is uh, crystal number two for him. Uh, nothing really important in Meyer though, so. And so far, nothing really important in Swamp either. I mean, we still have a few checks here, but. Yeah, we did end up finding the uh, big key in the uh, back half here. And with that map, that means that that big chest has something. Yep. Uh, whether it matters or not, who knows? Mm, good news for Pug fans. Uh, that's a mirror that Andy's about to pick up here. Oh, good read from Andy. Going into Spike Cave. I also like the choice to do this immediately after a boss once you've had a magic refill. Yeah, that makes sense. So I suspect we'll see Andy probably going into Swamp here shortly as well. But, I mean, it's starting to feel like Desert has something. Yeah, we do have a lot of uh, options on the table right now. Uh, but Desert certainly seems like a place we've been pushed by the logic. And it's one of those things, too. Being the green pendant, you may want to collect it before heading over to the pot eastern area. Is, you know, 
even if you decide to go there without the bow. Um, yeah, a uh, question in chat. We have not seen the front of Skull Woods, but keeping in mind that the front of Skull Woods just has one item because, you know, with Ambrosia, guaranteed item on the boss, it's kind of like a, a, a lot of time spent for that one item. Aridin going back for that big chest and swamp. We'll see if there's anything there. I find this choice very interesting because you definitely don't want to come back to this area ever again. Um, yeah. So, I mean, Aridin potentially looking to not throw the early mirror advantage. Yeah, this is definitely a, a safe play. You know, coming back to Swamp later, you know, you have to go through the portal again, you know, uh, drain the water. So... Let's see where he goes. Still cannot do anything in ice, which is probably a blessing right now. It's a pendant. You don't really want to go there if you don't have to. Um, but I think this is the Meyer play from Aridin. And I guess we'll see if he decides to do desert afterwards or not. Oh, interesting. Oh, or, or desert comes first. All right. Um, <laughs> cool. I'm excited to see what's here. Aridin definitely knew about the uh, the ether requirement to get in prior to coming back here. Um, Aridin did scout this out earlier. Uh, so this is potentially, in my mind, trying to just lean further into that whole uh, I have the mirror thing. So does that small key there, can it not be picked up by the hookshot or was it just being blocked by the torch? Um, yes. <laughs> well, because I know the, the small key in Hera. Oh, great. A shovel. Um, I genuinely don't know how that is uh, the same or different in Randomizer. That's a good question. Okay, so looks like Aridin seems happy with that shovel from Desert. Not going to the boss here. Didn't He didn't go for the big key. Yeah, and if that shovel ends up being the only important thing over here, that would be the best case scenario. Right. All right, Andy showing us Diver Down with the Samaria. Okay, but what I want to know is, is this a big day in Aridin's eyes? Nope, because we came from the north, you can't bird toss. Chalmers somewhere, sulking. <laughs> Aww. <clears throat> So, uh, Meyer here, probably not going to go faster overall than what we saw out of Andy. Andy had a very good looking uh, Meyer in terms of just not taking extra time in these uh, rooms. Um, so, Andy very likely to have an opportunity to spring forward. Uh, Aridin has done quite a few more mirror checks, but if Andy doesn't get suckered into those uh, checks, you know, that's a big reversal. Yeah, indeed. Um, and I think the only thing that Aridin could do here to save time over Andy would be to not search for that item in cutscene. Um, we know that it's just a five rupees, but I don't know if Aridin wants to leave behind a potential something in that chest. <clears throat> it would be hard for me to fathom that, uh, but it is reasonable to go left side early um, to not do all the the stuff that we saw to Andy. We saw Andy go to the map chest. Yeah, so here's another choice, uh, you know, presented. Andy does get this big key, and we'll continue on to the boss. Yeah, I imagine he'll, because I think the map is, what, in this chest? So I think he'll go at least to see that, and then decide if he wants to go back in or not. Yeah, that makes sense, because the math wasn't determined just yet. Yeah, if there had been an item in the waterfall chest, could have excluded by logic the uh, the uh, big chest. Uh, how do you swim so fast? 
Uh, there's actually like a rhythm to it. Uh, you can practice it, but it's kind of arcane knowledge to most folks. I, I definitely okay. don't know the exact right rhythm to it, but you can definitely swim way faster. Oh, wow. I don't know if I've seen this. Did you see him? Like, he was grabbing multiple puffs and like poking them? Um, I will immediately get corrected by chat if I'm wrong about this, but I believe that's doing uh, like a small frame window for the dash uh, in order to get the poke without dropping the hook shot. That's like way faster than my Master Sword Argus fight. To be fair, it's also way more difficult than the average fight. Oh, I, yeah, I imagine so. Like, how do you keep your sword like that? That's crazy. Yeah, so I believe he's tapping dash at the right time. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. And that is crystal number three for Andy, including one of them being a red crystal. Uh, we'll see what he decides to do here. Oh, right. Yeah, big chest. <laughs> well, he is heading back in. Airden, unfortunately, getting burned by last locating the... Uh... The remaining item, I believe you said it was a bloopy, uh, which is yeah. very feels bad. Yeah, going to cutscene in Mire with just the lamp all to find a five rupee is just, it feels oof. <laughs> but it's a risk to skip it, you know, like. Do you skip that? Like, how do you know, right? Alrighty, well, Andy is out of there. Um, we'll continue onwards to do the rest of the mirror checks, it looks like. Yeah, this makes sense. I mean, um, it's it's something he knows that, you know, where the mitts were, um, his opponent could have likely done this already. Um, we know that his opponent did do it. Um, so I think it's a safe play on his side to do this. Um, but like you said, it kind of puts them <clears throat> almost like neck and neck in terms of what they've done and where they are in progression. Um, I imagine Aridin will be finishing up Meyer right around the time Andy finishes, you know, the Smith chain. Do you remember offhand where that shovel was? It was in desert. Yes, so that's a thing Andy has not uh, poked his head into, and there's some possibility after, you know, being done with Meyer that Aridin goes to check that. Yeah, absolutely. And then I, you know, I wonder with Aridin being here um, in the Meyer desert area, will he go and clear Landmo for the two potential items? Or will he just go straight to check the shovel and then potentially come back later? Well, it remains to be seen. Airden has a, I would traditionally call a difficult vitreous fight. Uh, Master Sword is certainly manageable, but even with extra mail on, uh, I would not count this automatic. Yeah, this is one of those, you know, having the cape, I would just sit in front and just turn on cape and slash, 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 but um, <laughs> that's why I'm not as good as them. <laughs> Damage boost or de-boost uh, Vitreous is probably one of the most important boss fights to really practice, as the actual spacing with the eyeballs and getting the iframes is very particular. Uh, and you're not going to get it just, you know, with a little bit of work. Um, and then, of course, oh. I think the one thing people under-practice is this part of the fight. Oh my gosh! I'm sorry! <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I'm just, I'm terrified right now. This is so scary. I don't know how they do this with the hammer. Oh! Oh! Okay, I need to mute myself. I, I think the strategy is just to keep your eye on the ball. <laughs> oh, my heart. I can't take it. And by eye on the ball, I mean ball peen hammer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the eye is the ball. There's the ball peen hammer on the eye? Yeah. But yes, as uh, as there's mentioning in chat, uh, there there is blue mail in that situation, so Aridin would have tanked at least one hit and survived, uh, but still scary. Oh, that yeah, that's a good point. I didn't even. I'm just so used to the green mails from the qualifiers that I was like, he's one hit away, he's gonna die. Oh no! But he didn't take even one hit, so.
Um, I like that Andy did check the graveyard ledge with that purple chest. Um, but I didn't catch. Did he stop by bumper? I can't. I, I didn't see. I, I was too we nervous about the bumper at this point. Okay. We know that Andy did the boots checks north side. Um, very unlikely to attract dark or north dark world. And I don't think Aridens had a reason to be over there yet. Hey, looks like Andy's making that play into the pod eastern area, deciding not to go into desert. I think, you know, having cleared uh, Tower of Hera and finding nothing, um, he may feel like, oh, I, I better, you know, not <clears throat> just, you know, doing all dungeons today. So um, we'll see. Uh, Aridens checking the shovel right now. And just the red 20. Yeah, we were looking for red, just not that red. <laughs> yeah. All right, now where's Aridin going? Is this North Dark World? I think he hasn't done those, and I wonder if he'll stop by uh, Front of Skull. Yeah, judging from the uh, reaction in chat, I believe we have seen Bumper Ledge at some point, uh, so it's definitely not checking that stuff out. Or Andy may have already been the one to do so. Um, yeah, I'm curious. It feels like it would be a good opportunity to go to Skull Woods. Um, but the problem is that, you know, only one item it doesn't feel good. Yeah, it definitely does not feel good. All right, we are seeing Bumper here, though, with Aerodin. <clears throat> Just bombs there. Oh, hover. And correct me if I'm wrong, but this is one of the more difficult hovers to do in the game, right? Because you have to get it perfectly on that rail. Yeah, that is a pixel perfect, uh, you know, placement. It's just think about it like the hammer yump. You have to be in the exact right uh, X plane. Well, this is the Y plane, and you have to continue it past the chest, and there it is. And all while hovering. <laughs> it ain't easy getting double keysy bo uh, bolus, but Andy pulls it off. Now, I don't remember if Andy has anything in the bottle. Um, would he be able to go over to the right side? Well, I guess you can always uh, mimic clip it, right? Yeah, you could. It doesn't uh, have to, to be potion glitch. To my knowledge, Andy doesn't have any potion contents. But yes, you can mimic, uh, mimic clip instead of uh, potion glitching. OK. Oh, OK. So Aridin just got a fairy in a bottle from uh, Graveyard Ledge, and Andy did do that. So Andy also has a fairy in a bottle. So that is an option as well. I will say, though, that I'm half expecting a bow to be in the back here uh, now that we found double keys on the bow lock side. Bow and pod, huh? I'm feeling it. Um, <laughs> I don't even know if we're going to see a hammer up here. Oh. Oh, he considered it. It was too late, but he was ready for the bufferless. I don't... <laughs> he was ready to do it. Andy, I salute you for bufferless hammer yump. You are my hero. And I think we're seeing a catfish play here from Herodin. Yeah, this is uh, uncharted territory for us. Pain of Burna. Catfish has just 50 rupees. Well, it would have been really cool if that was like a fire rod or bombos, because Aridin could have just taken a whirlpool right to Ice Palace just for convenience. Um, but yeah. the odd it is. Hey, Ice Rod and Pod. It's not exactly what we need, but it's good to have. I'm still thinking desert this whole time. I'm just like, I don't know why, but desert is just shouting at me. You know, maybe you're receiving a telepathic message from Sahazwala, who in fact is speaking to you through desert. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what's happening. Our good friend Sharky Shark is a psychic. <laughs> I like uh, 
poor Swedes uh, comment in chat in before Easter Palace had the bow this whole time. Oh, not necessarily the bow, but definitely a fire rod. Wow. You got to wonder how much the math changes on this seed if you find that fire rod early. Yeah, what would they have done, you know, like. And so that's one of those things where, you know, in randomizer, sometimes you're just getting a retroactive regret. You had no reason to think you needed to regret until you find the reason to regret. And then uh, the longer the race has been going, the the more that can potentially stack. Yeah. And Andy also found the the powder in the second check. Knows that that's the two items he'll find in the front and bailed out of Eastern right away. That makes sense. He knows he's not going to find the bow there. Um, might as well go, you know, do those other things he just found. Um, but this does put Turtle Rock as a full clearable dungeon. Which, I mean, hey, that sounds like a great thing until you're like, well, there's still <laughs> a lot of crystals we don't have. Right. I mean, bow is one of those items that you're, you know, you often find in Turtle Rock, um, especially in a mode where there's progressive bows. There are two of them out there. You know, could just be those silvers in, in Turtle Rock, but that could be your bow. Yeah, this, uh, this mode does have progressive bows. Uh, that is not necessarily the same in every single mode of the tournament. I believe it's the uh, open hard mode that doesn't have progressive bows, if I'm recalling correctly. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, all the others have progressive. Yeah, and so, you know, there's still a possibility that both of our runners could potentially encounter different bows. Oh, it looks like Aridin is going to check the bow lock side of Pod. Um, you know, there is also a chance that there's a bow here. Like, that could be the silvers, right? Right, and while we know that it isn't, it's something that is in Aridin's mind. Oh, wait, did Andy check these? I just, uh, did yeah, I miss he it? Oh my gosh, you're right. <laughs> Whoops. Well, really rough news for Aridin there as uh, the bonk off of the berry actually uh, borked the camera bop. Oh no. So mirror now. Okay, so no ice rod for Aridin, um, but it looks like he'll probably be finding a fire rod here. <clears throat> not sure if he'll go all the way to the powder or not, but I imagine so. And, you know, in the grand scheme of things, this is potentially a blessing for Aridin, as that was time that Andy didn't need to spend over on the right side. Uh, so if Aridin, you know, only comes back for the crystal with a bow, uh, that could be a really fast way to finish the dungeon and not bother. That's a Tempered Sword. Tempered Sword on Mothula. Um, not necessarily required, but definitely nice to have. A very rewarding place to get it to. <laughs> I don't know. I like to have it before then, but you're right. You, you you beat that moth with your master sword, and you're like, yeah, success, accomplishment, and you get an extra sword for it. So, like in terms of game design, I would feel well rewarded if I got it there in the vanilla game. Yeah, yeah, that would be a good spot for it. Okay, I think. Andy is taking that ice rod um, into Turtle Rock. Um, and if we remember, he did go in there already and got the big key. So um, now he'll be able to go to the firelock side um, and progress through the whole dungeon. We'll see if he finds anything there. We are basically a bow from go mode. Yeah, and this makes a ton of sense, um, you know, to go to Turtle Rock when you know you can finish it. Um, Something I'm concerned about is that Aridin did not go to the Dark Maze in Palace of Darkness and doesn't have the Ice Rod. Uh, what could potentially work out in Aridin's favor is if that bow is somewhere else, not Turtle Rock. Like, for example, right. Ice Palace and he goes there. Uh, that would be a potential opportunity for, to flip the script again on Andy, who could potentially spend the time to clear all of Turtle Rock and potentially other dungeons. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, Turtle Rock is one of those dungeons where go moding it doesn't speed it up that much. Um, so, oh no, Wallmaster. But, you know, go moding it is still faster at the end of the day. So, um, especially with the big key location, you can steal the key from the Pokey. Don't have to go check Lava Chest. You know, you can skip Mimic Cave. So on. Thank <clears throat> you. 
Well, Aridin is taking the opposite approach of Andy here with Skull Woods, going to really clear out everything. Um, I believe Andy been, went pretty much straight to the back. Uh, yeah, so Andy checked the very first item in Skull Woods, uh, the one to the right of the big chest, and that had an item. So he knew that there was no nothing else except for on the boss. Whereas Aridin went to the back first. Um, so he doesn't have that information of where the second item is. Well, as we march further and deeper into Turtle Rock today with a bonanza of bonuses off of that pokey, that was three drops. You'll love to see it. Um, also, like to remind everybody that uh, this, you know, restream today brought on to you on ALTTP Randomizer channel, um, hosted or I guess restreamed specifically by our good friend Arturil. Uh, thank you again for doing that. As well as, uh, you know, being hosted by the ALTTPR community in general. If you're interested in playing, ALTTPR.com is a good place to get started. Uh, you can patch your, you know, legally owned copy of Link to the Past and, you know, join the fun. Uh, tournament's already underway, you can't enter at this point, but you can definitely practice for next year. Uh, but if you're looking to see more races than just this one, your best bet is to follow the ALTTP randomizer channels and speed gaming channels, uh, one through four respectively, five and six, and even beyond for SG. All right, hour mark. We've got a bow to find. Smirk, what you thinking? I mean, my money is still on Desert Palace. I I don't know why the the whole time it's been shouting at me. Um, the, that said, there are two bows, right? So even if there is one in Desert, that doesn't mean there's one, there isn't one elsewhere. So um, it's just a matter of which one do they find and which one is more convenient for them. That being said, I believe I just witnessed Andy get the perfect Pokey RNG. That's one in 16 chance. And he sees that uh, another, another opportunity to salute you, Andy. You're definitely striking the right chords in my heart today. <laughs> He is on fire today, that's for sure. Doing, like, the best everything. Yeah, it was mentioned earlier about some of the luck that uh, he has stumbled into with the early bomb drop um, and a couple of other fortunate finds like that hammer really early. Of course, that can just be a tactical decision. Can't call everything luck. <laughs> okay, so we are seeing Airden do the powder check, which Andy did skip. He went to TR um, without checking this. So we'll see what's here. And we have a bow. Wow. Okay. So the so it kind of, it, the powder was an Eastern. <laughs> so it was a bow in Eastern, basically. But that's that's not go mode for Aridin, but I imagine he's going to finish pod in Eastern here. Um, and that will be go mode for Aridin here shortly. Yeah, we saw him switch directly to hammer mid flute. Um, so I think your instincts are exactly right in the money. Uh, now, Aridin, of course, you know, is getting bailed out by that bow because this is a good reason to head back for that ice rod, which will be that true mode, uh, true go mode. And I can't see a reason Aridin skips the left side, um, still knowing there's one more thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if he was like already in go mode, I would, I, you know, definitely skip it. But yeah. He, he knows he kind of like messed up with the, the mimics before, um, still has uh, plenty of items here in the back. Um, he may decide to go to the boss first, um, just in case that's the ice rod. Uh. So this is one more opportunity for Andy to have basically no uh, major time loss. If there's a bow here on the bridge, uh, Andy definitely gets bailed out of the other one. And with no key yet, there is definitely not, um, unless Trinex himself has it. Yeah, Trinex could still have a bow, that's true. Yeah, because just looking at this, you know, as it stands now, some of the positives and negatives for both of these runners, um, Aridin has a bit of crystal progression to catch up with. Um, and by a bit, I mean some of the more annoying dungeons. Uh, but we'll be able to tag team both of these here. Andy has definitely done Turtle Rock already at this point. And that could end up paying out, you know, in dividends later as Aridin will have to still do most of the same stuff. 
Um, but Andy will be able to knock out a lot of these dungeons quicker uh, with, you know, that ice rod the first time around. Very, very impressive Trinex right there by Andy, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. Uh, great points, uh, you die. Um, you know, Andy has what, this is his fifth crystal now? <clears throat> um, so he he's just potting Eastern away. He just needs to find that bow, do both. And he's already cleared the items from the dungeon, so. Hey, not a bow on Trinex, but we do find half magic, which is always nice to have. Um, I don't think e either of them need it, but. No, and at this point, I think it just kind of uh, eases any need you would ever have to replenish your magic. If you plan on going into ice, which is uh, not exactly far-fetched for Andy here. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, you know, the powder is just one check that's sitting there all by itself. But I think this might be a powder check. I think it is. Yeah, good that's call on Andy's Andy. part. This is going to put Andy in go mode. So the question at this point is, how fast can Andy complete Eastern Pod, um, you know, in the circumstances provided, compared to Aridin's Eastern Turtle Rock? Um, Aridin will have the advantage of having climbed the mountain first before Andy is heading up the GT. Uh, but, I mean, I think the tides are kind of shifting a little bit in Andy's favor overall. Uh, I think so. By yeah. maybe a minute or two. <clears throat> yeah, because so Andy hit go mode at 110.50 ish. Um, he's just got to clear pot Eastern bosses. I think he still has to find the big key in Eastern Palace, but um, whereas Airden still has to go back into pod to scout for that ice rod, and then he can just mirror out um, and do Eastern, but then he still has to do Turtle Rock. So. I think you're right. I think it, it's putting Andy maybe about a minute, um, maybe two ahead right now. Well, a big development just now. Aridin left Pod without what? Ice pa Ice Guard or Ice oh, no. uh, Rod. Okay, well, this still makes sense, right? Like, if Ice Rod is on Armos Knights, then, you know, he doesn't have to do the back of Pod. But I doubt he'll he'll just leave the back of Pod if he doesn't, once, once he doesn't find the Ice Rod. Yeah, so I mean, I guess you could look at it this way, you know, knowing that there are definitely two items on these bosses, it almost makes sense to guarantee your crystals and hope, you know, the remaining item is on one of them. And if yeah. not, then you already have the portal there. It costs you, what, a, a portal transition? Right, right. All right, looks like the big key is in the vanilla big key chest, so still got to go all the way around. Meanwhile, um, although Andy's already done most of Palace of Darkness already, basically all of it, um, you know, not going to have to do much besides get that big key in Eastern. Uh, there's going to be no revisiting of anything. Yep. And after he's done with Eastern, it's just uh, climb the mountain, go to GT. So. All right. So even assuming like a first try hammer yump immediately from Aridin here, uh, straight to the bottom chest. That's at least half a TR, if not more. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, so I'm not exactly sure time-wise how much that is. So we'll have to, you know, try to keep track of that. But I don't think and you know, very exciting here to the end. Yeah, and you know, GT routing is also a thing, right? Like so. Um, even if there is a couple minute lead, like you never know what happens with the, the GT big key. Smooth right. actually with greenies for Aridin as Andy is smacking the face off of Helmosaur King here. Oh, using the hammer there. <laughs> nice. Very nicely done by Andy. Down goes Helmosaur. And on to Eastern Palace for for Andy here. Yep, so we're about to find out real quick here whether or not uh, Aridin is doing what we think is probably the ideal play of checking your bosses, or if Aridin's about to miss that Ice Rock hard. Yeah, uh, let's hope for his sake that he goes right back into pod. Hey, 
Okay, and that's crystal number six for Aridin. Let's see what he decides to do here. That's big. All right, so Aridin back into Palace of Darkness. Oh, good, good, okay. Could potentially sink time here with the wrong checks. Um, and every second counts at this point. There's only so much GT basement you can hope for a difference with. Absolutely. And remember, you know, Andy did save those 35 seconds or so at the beginning by getting the flute and mimic or in mini Mulder and Kate first. So. <laughs> oh, we're going there. We are, we are <laughs> keeping track of that. All right. So a little more time sunk here, which you would expect uh, because yeah. it is more efficient to go back to front. In the meantime, Andy here dashing through uh, Pump Hallway here in just a moment. Um, aptly named because it's one of the few opportunities in the game you can walk left and pump in both directions um, efficiently. Into that, uh, well, <laughs> no damage boost here. Vanilla big key and a nice little indoor hook speed. When you said dashing through pump hallway, I, I, for some reason, my mind went straight to bashing through the snow. I was like, wait. On a uh, one pug open sleigh? <laughs> Over Turtle Rock we go. Uh, ice and... rod all the way for Aridin. Nice. Wow. Wow, you're good at this. I, you know, I gotta compensate for not being good at this, the game, which these two are. If you haven't already, follow Andy and Aridin on their personal Twitch channels. Uh, these two are doing quite the service putting on the show for us, and this has been an exhilarating race all around. Absolutely. And yeah, thank you, GP520 in chat for mentioning. Andy also did get the boots first, um, and we'll have to see if uh, in interviews um, if Aridin maybe missed that message, um, or if it, if it was a decision to put off the boots. Alright, crystal number seven for Andy. Alright, well we have a bit of a lead in here, and uh, Aridin technically climbing the uh, mountain first, but not with all seven. Uh, there's a fun little, uh, you know, Whole thing we like to do on these uh, races, right? You know, some do with chests and numbers and oh yeah, like you know, people out there. About. So how does it work? Uh, you die. Well, there's 22 item locations here in the basement of <laughs> GT, <laughs> and somewhere out there is a number that you select that is potentially in alignment with the actual sequence of checks, and if you align your check. Well, you don't win anything, but it feels cool. Uh, if you had to guess between a number and one and 22, uh, Smirk, what, what, what would you guess? Okay, so I have a rule for myself as when I'm a commentator, I always guess four now because it's my favorite number and I don't want to like change it. How about you? You know, I'm, I'm thinking that Andy probably agrees with you. He has four on the floor as a pug, or maybe two actually by two. Um, I'm a 13 uh, myself. I, I really do Ooh. like something about the prime. Lucky 13. Huh? All right. Well, we will see. He is almost there. And you know, for how like slow the beginning of the seed felt, getting to GT at 118.25 is... <laughs> what? <laughs> how did that happen? I'm having trouble believing it because I didn't really look at the clock for a while, but yeah, 100%. It feels like you were saying, oh, okay, we're at the hour mark, and it was like around an hour and five minutes, and we were still three items from go, so... Just came out of nowhere. Alrighty, Andy here has a pretty hefty advantage walking into GT, not insurmountable, but certainly escaping that uh, territory of surmountability. Uh, Andy will end up going right side, thanks to that key. Probably one of the parts of the game where you feel most rewarded for having half magic. It's nice to not completely deplete through these torches. 
Yeah, I'm always thankful for Half Magic coming over here. Just fire out these uh, Gibdos out of the way and... Alright, so that was number three, four, five, and six. No such luck so far. Um, getting a question in chat about why Aerodin is still checking chests. If they're in your path, uh, they could have silvers and that will shave minutes. Um, also, I mean, it's TR, so you want to find more small keys, right? Like if you can skip Laser Bridge, for example, uh, you know, he still has to go steal a key from the Pokey here. Yeah, so a couple of good reasons, um, but I might, I wouldn't even be surprised to see Andy, you know, taking a moment to check a couple of extra chests, say if he finds it in this room. Uh, seven, eight, a couple keys, nine, 20 rupees, and 10. Hey, there it is. Also, I will, I want to point this out. Andy had the Ether Medallion out and ready to use in that room. So for any criticizers of Ether users, <laughs> You know, I funny. feel validated. I called the race yesterday that actually had uh, ether usage in that room, and it seems like a much faster medallion in that room than, you know, the other options. Yeah, well, I mean, it's the fastest medallion, but, like, you know, those, those Thalphuses, they get really dodgy. <laughs> All right, that's two keys for Aerodin. I think at this point we may see him completely skip Laser Bridge here. Yeah, and I believe at this point he just needs to do that, uh, you know, in terms of time save opportunity. Uh, even with yeah. going full left, which is reasonably likely, um, you know, that's a pretty much most of a GT climb at this point. Yeah, one that Andy is indeed flying through, and he's going very quickly through these. It's kind of wild because, you know, this is still inside you know the territory of sub 90 for both of them if Aerodin makes the exact right gt you know route um, yeah wow and just to imagine you know that you might see a dot done from somebody imminently <laughs> it's just a crazy thought this tournament is so competitive Well, three heads for both bosses. Uh, Andy burning through one implement. Uh, Aerodin having to switch between the two of his. Uh, but that'll be enough to escape the gauntlet for Andy. Aerodin still hoping to get there. Uh, question in chat. Half magic you will see very soon on Trinex. You know, I gotta say, it's an auspicious location for half magic as the fractional math between three heads, one body, and half magic is kind of interesting. Like, does each one have, like, you know... Oh god, I'm not good at fractions, but I mean, how much magic does each head have in that scenario? Oh, wow. Uh, let's see. Three heads for half magic? Um, so... I don't know. I did not spec as a uh, math magician. <laughs> Is that like a sixth each? I, I don't know. It just depends on what you mean by half magic. Like, do they each contain a third of the half? Or do they, since it's half magic, you have double your magic. Do they each contain a third of the double? You know, I think yeah. what we need to do is we need to convene <laughs> in Paradox Cave and we might be able to sort this out. <laughs> I, I like homemade beer's answer in chat better. Just 69, that's it. <laughs> Fair enough. Or 42 might be the answer to everything. 42, the answer to everything, yeah. All right, well, Andy's searching for answers here in the uh, drop down off of Moldorm 2. Not wanting to have the, uh, the fractional math. Looking for consequential math to knock out a second Moldorm this seed. Will manage to do so. The hover was not going to be the answer, so we'll hook shot over. Checks the final chest of GT. And looks like Aerodin is also taking the key to the right here, so pretty much the same path that Andy took. Well, since it's brought up, um, and before we enter the Aga 2 fight here for Andy, uh, there was a question in chat about where you can find the schedule. A fun thing added to the tournament server, if you're not a part of it already, 
um, is that there are events linked for every single race, whether it's got a restream or if it's a multi-stream. Uh, so you can check that if you're trying to find them. That was a really nice double out of handy. If only my Aga 2 could be this good. I mean, he did whiff the second second play. So I mean, <laughs> you know, I, may, I maybe cursed it or jinxed it as I said that. So sorry, Andy. But uh, <laughs> the third was really impressive, though. The that third was. was singles. Yeah. Alrighty, hour 25 minutes. Andy scooped from the top of Ganon's tower, ready to close this out in that 90 minute fashion or, or less. Yeah, it's definitely looking like that sub. I mean, this is silverless, but uh, tempered sword silverless is something, you know, everybody in this tournament is well practiced in, so. There's GT Big Key for Aridin, but if you want to see a clinic on one plus one, Andy's definitely a good resource. Almost looked like the spin didn't work there, but we'll definitely get enough off of this. And the dash strats. I really want to learn how to do this. This it's so cool. Well, it's definitely something that you know you spend a lot of time in practice hack perfecting. Did you see that? He like slash Ganon to bounce away from the bat so he didn't get hit. That was pretty cool. Oh, Eric and damage boosting. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I mean, you have to use everything, every single thing you can in Gan's Tower to try and boost you ahead. I mean, you could potentially use a lot of the BMO statues for that purpose. Um, a lot of warps stay out of Ganon. Oh my gosh, did you see that? Did you see that? Silvers in Desert Palace. I was right. What's up? <laughs> not only that, but we're missing a torch glitch here, so... Andy, you know, definitely not going to go find those silvers or nothing, but it's got to feel bad. Yeah, I mean, fortunately, you have half magic here, um, so I, I don't think he's going to, like, you know, try to redo the fight or anything, but... Yeah, he's definitely comfy uh, territory, but, I mean, I think that's part of why he even missed it in the first place, is that was a bit of a shocking location for Bo. I mean, we had Lamp, we had, you know, Fire Rod, Yeah, I mean, uh, basically, once you found that mirror, Desert was available. Um, so that that was a bow that could have been had before the dip into Eastern. Well, I think we can now officially say you told us. <laughs> Andy, however, telling us as much, and so, with a uh, completion here, an explosion of Ganon, uh, hour 27 minutes and a change... Hey, get your GG's in chat for Andy, who finished at 127.33, fried the bacon with the bacon sword. And what is the Triforce text today? I'll be honest, I missed it looking for the time. Wait, did it already go by? What? Oh no, I missed it. <laughs> I was still waiting for it. <laughs> and GG's to Andy. Yep, so uh, being that this is pretty close, it looks like we'll probably have them assemble in our waiting room for a moment while uh, Aridin is finishing up the run here. Uh, phenomenal effort from both of them. And uh, while Aridin is finishing up top of the tower, a couple of, you know, business points. I um, want to thank real quick um, Arturol for doing the restream and Jinxie Girl for being our tracker today and of course smirk you for joining me on the mic uh it was a lot of fun uh, i'm very uh, happy to see that you join the commentary team <laughs> thank you you day it was really fun coming with you as well all righty we get a shunned final chest here in moldorm 2's battle room Aridin sliding on over past everything including bumpers making good use of cape 1400 rupees, plenty of resources. We are almost to the conclusion. Good opportunity for a triple there for slashing, but the spin is more reliable and I guess safe in this situation. Uh, 
Aridin up to three total hits. Same thing happened with Andy on that cycle. As yeah. We gotta repeat twice. Wait. Kind of an unfortunate thing to have happen there, Aghanim bumping into the wall, which will cancel the attack. That's what happens? Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, same thing can happen if you knock him into the wall directly, although I think that's... Um, the animation was canceled in the middle of it, which is kind of weird. All right, time for Aridin to drop down into Ganon. Uh, see how his Ganon fight goes today. I wonder if he'll be shocked about Desert Palace. <laughs> yeah, that's actually the part I'm most anticipating here about this Ganon fight, because we saw, I mean, I, I can't say for certain until we ask Andy whether or not that, you know, influenced his uh, reaction there. Um, he did mention in the restream chat after he was done uh, that he just wanted to show people how the fight goes with that torch glitch, but um, I personally would have lost my composure at that moment. <laughs> I mean, I appreciate it. I am taking notes here throughout this entire time, trying to learn everything I can from how to play this game. Well, and with that, we're getting very diverse strats here. Um, Aridin opting to use that cape, that cape uh, to maximum usage. We have a forced half magic in this seed, so you may as well. And with only half a magic meter to plead, it has plenty to work with. Torch glitch secured for Aridin. Well set up for triples. Um, unfortunate extra usage there. And I, the thing you want to do in that situation to try and uh, to land that triple is to let Ganon move towards you before you light while you have the sword outstretched. Um, Aridin had most of that put together, but was too far away to get the triple out of it. Yeah, I, I, I haven't actually counted how many hits he's gotten, but he may want to switch to Lamp if he doesn't have a magic refill. Cause... Yeah, he does have enough right now, but it's close. For one more, right? I think. Um, at least for Lamp usage, but that should be enough. Oh, okay. Ganon's down. Ganon's down. We're safe. We'll say. <laughs> Excellent uh, composed finish there out of Aridin. Um, taking a full advantage of the inventory to make that fight as smooth as he could have. Yep, and get your GGs in chat for Aridin as well as he crosses and finishes with a time of 132.26. Congratulations and GG. And it looks like we are joined by both of our contestants today, Aridin and Andy. Welcome, GG. GGs. GG. Well, we had a lot of converging in this uh, race. Uh, most of it happening around the mirror. I wanted to ask your thoughts about Spike Cave today. Yeah, that was exactly what I wanted to ask Andy about also. I felt like I had done it fairly early, and so I felt like I was in a good position at that point, but the the hunts at the end for the bow and the ice rod really, I felt like just tore at all the all the time I had maybe gained, or maybe I hadn't at all. Um. So, let's see. I... I did Turtle Rock first chest instead of Spike Cave uh, with the plan to go to Meyer with the lamp I had just gotten. Um, and then after Meyer, I did Spike Cave. So I <laughs> I was feeling good towards the end because I didn't go into desert where like if I had had that mirror, I would definitely go into desert there. Uh, I don't know if I beat it and get, you know, the bow that was actually in there. <laughs> uh, but uh, but I felt. Uh, I felt pretty good, I guess, about about the late mirror. I still did like all of the mirror checks except for my area, basically. Um, but yeah, I was like laughing because I was like ta like talking about my decisions, and I was like, "Oh, I'm feeling pretty good if uh, this other bow is not in desert." And so I just started laughing <laughs> when Ganon told me, and then I was like, "Oh crap! There's a torch I have to light," <laughs> and I definitely forgot. Um, 
Yeah, this was a really interesting seed. I didn't find anything for the longest time until that mirror. And then there was nothing in Swamp, nothing in like all the dumb overworld stuff I got. And then I got Ice Rod and Fire Rod and Powder <laughs> back to back. So how late uh, did you do Pod and EP? Like, were those uh, like Yeah. I, I, did, I did Pod even though it was bow locked to get the ice rod. And I went into Eastern and got the fire rod. And I was like, I'm just going to check right side chest. And if it's the big key, I'll keep going. If it's the item, I'll leave. I got the powder. Um, then I went to skull woods cause I hadn't touched it at all yet. Um, then did turtle rock and then was like, you know what? If bows on powder, that's really gross. So I did that before ice and desert. Yeah, despite the amount of, um, you know, I guess extra overworld that both of you ended up having to do just through the natural progression of that mirror, uh, the two of you did make a lot of really interesting reads um, early on skipping Kakariko to get that hammer just happened to like seem like a head scratch moment that turned into brilliance, I guess, is how I would, you know, it's obviously a valid route, uh, but it sure feels like, you know, it's a genius route when it works out that way. Um, and then, of course, sniffing out the mirror very early on, um, Aridin seem like a stroke of genius without boots i feel like it's just way too hard to get back there and i, I feel like you know even if it's a, a low percent chance i just can't orphan anything that badly that early if there's one or two items until go mode maybe but at that point i was like seven or eight items away so oh, go ahead sorry didn't mean to cut you off oh no sorry i, I was done go ahead Oh, okay. So uh, that's actually a, a question that we had for a while. Um, so it seemed like you were actually putting off Thieves Town for a long time. Yeah. Um, did you miss the message or was that just like, you know, like, let me follow this progression that I'm finding here first decision? Oh, totally, totally forgot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cause like we saw Andy basically beeline to Thieves Town once yeah. Dark World was available. And then we saw you not do that. So we were like, oh, well, maybe, you know, cause you found the mitts in Hype Cave and, or I'm sorry, the flippers and then mitts. And you kind of followed the flippers and then, you know, you made your way to the mirror and you did Mire area and stuff like that. So, yeah. But yeah, that was, I, about that. I mean, I, I guess I'm really glad that the loss was about five minutes because I don't think Boots would have made five minutes of difference, maybe two, three, maybe even four. But I would have felt really bad if something that that silly would have uh, ended up being the difference. Yeah, I think there's at most maybe a 10 minute gap between when you guys collected them. And even then, you know, only so much potential gameplay between there to save time with. Um, so I think that makes sense. That sounds about right. Um, you know, of yeah. course, all around, you know, interesting bits of unique this mode kind of specific knowledge on display. Um, we saw both of you really, t you know, count your items carefully and play the dungeons intelligently. Um, any thoughts on Ambrosia as a tournament format mode? It's like it. better Sorry, than standard. <laughs> uh, I, it's interesting to keep track of dungeon things. It also makes like air without fire source a, a viable dip. Uh, the only dungeon that was really bad was Mire, I guess. Uh, that was like the worst possible layout for Mire. Um, <laughs> But yeah, a lot of the dungeons just makes them a lot quicker. <clears throat> a lot quicker. Um, yeah, the boot hint's always nice, uh, unless it's like Ganon's Tower, and then you're just in misery for <laughs> an hour and a half. Even then, you have an idea. Like you, it gives you some information. Like you have an idea that you should, you know, maybe route a little more um, comprehensively. I, I guess, like you know, orphan things less if you know you're not have boots for a while. Oh my like god, the the, the bomb drop and escape. I had gotten one drop from rats up until like the drop down room. And I knew that they were in like the one of everything pack and I needed five drops in the last room to get a bomb. Uh, and I, and I won all five 50 50. So, Oh, wow. I, yeah. I just left without a bomb. I, I saw the pack <laughs> was, I misread the pack. I thought it was the magic pack at first. And then after a few more kills, I realized there was a bomb deep in there and I said, Nope. I'm just going to hope the gloves aren't back there and continue out on business. It's way too deep for me to do it now. Yeah, both of you guys have pretty dry drops well into the escape sequence. So we were kind of wondering, you know, is there a shot? And we did end up seeing it despite it not being super valuable. But it's one of those things that you breathe a sigh of relief about. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So you mentioned the hammer. I uh, I actually don't remember. Where was the hammer? 
it was, was like a dam drain. Mm, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, I think yeah. the the actual advantage of doing the South Shore first was was the flute more than the hammer because you got the flute and then you could you know skip an extra trip over to Kakariko to activate it. Yeah, the big the big reason for that, like leaving escape with bombs and a sword, you can like guarantee do min or mini worm cave easily. Um, and if like glove or hammer is down there and then the others in Kakariko that saves like the gross like minute walk to the, the portal, um, especially with boots and thieves town. Um, yeah, and then flute just happened to be there, so it was double, double nice. It's a really good point. I didn't think about saving that that extra walk. You're right, though. Hey, it yeah, all that's a lot up. of wisdom being shared there. <laughs> yeah, and, and we're going to need every bit of it in order to uh, escape this group. Group O, in an interesting scenario now, um, with both Aridan and Andy, our two featured runners today, at uh, two wins up. Uh, this is the first loss for Aridan, and Andy still has uh, a few matches to go. Both of you have, what, four and three matches respectively. Um, the only outside contender in this group between TJ Joel and... Uh, Emosaru is probably Emosaru at this point with 0-3, uh, but there's still a lot of space here for some interesting action, and I really encourage all of you who are watching in the audience to take a look at the challenge page, you know, get invested in these uh, tournament runs, because, you know, there, there's six matches for everybody, and a lot of excitement ahead. Um, I want to take a moment to thank both of you for putting on this uh, race for us today. It was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, we had a lot of fun talking about it. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy watching it back. Yeah, thanks a yeah, ton thanks. for having us in and for doing the, the restream and comms and the tracking and uh, everything else. Yeah, thank you, guys. Yeah, I'd like to say that it was very fun, but you both gave me heart attacks with Viddy, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you do Hammer Viddy, Andy? Uh, I did Cape and Master Sword spins until the big eyeball. Yeah, and then. And then, and then Hammer. Yeah, same. Yeah, hammer hammer viddy is a lot it, it looks a lot scarier than it actually is uh the left hammer hitbox is ginormous i have to keep that in mind because whenever i do hammer viddy it doesn't work out like that <laughs> 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 but yeah i definitely want to say thank you to both of you as well it was an extremely fun race to watch uh just seeing your choices and seeing the the knowledge and wisdom you have about the game behind those decisions um it's incredible um, and it was super entertaining. So thank you so much. Thank you. And hopefully next one will be good, too. I think we can count on that. And speaking of the next one, there are a lot more races on the schedule today. Uh, just to give you an idea of the next couple, uh, we got one starting on SG2 here between Koi and Asder. Um, you know, just coming up at the top of the hour. So another 15 minutes before that starts. And SG3, SG Main also have races at 210. Uh, Coxlow versus 2C and Nelson Alex 92 versus Error. Plenty more going on later in the day. You got to follow all these channels if you want to see them all. Um, join the tournament Discord. You can see them as events, which is pretty neat. Um, on behalf of uh, the rest of the tournament squad, uh, we're also looking for more volunteers. So, you know, if you want to do commentary, tracking, restreaming, uh, we need people like you. And want to thank all of you for staying tuned with us today. Uh, I think that just about wraps it up. Um, any closing thoughts, folks? Not for me. Uh, I just wanted to echo as well the you know the thanks to the restreamer Athahil and to you you die and to everyone else. So thank you so much. Well, it has been an absolute pleasure uh, to be on the mic with you today, Smirk. Um, I've been Udai Ministic. Thank you for everyone for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.